we're going to look at the big society and what this means. Now there seem to be two schools of thought. One is that it's a political concoction and that as such it doesn't really deserve much attention. The other one is to say maybe there's something in this it's certainly worth looking at and worth developing. Now joining me in the studio today is Professor David Grayson. Now David you've got special expertise in the areas of corporate responsibility and sustainability. What's your take on this? Well clearly the big society is a political idea which is being very aggressively pursued by the present coalition government. Uh, on the other hand of course it is something which cuts across the political spectrum. You've got people from, from different political views um, supporting different aspects of it. And at the same time, whether we like it or loathe it, this is clearly something that is going to have huge implications and I think really involves, um, as I understand it, um, three principal elements. It's about um, the attempt to devolve power from the centre to local provision and that devolution not just from central to local government but also to a whole range of other organisations, civil society and so on. It's secondly about um, a much broader range of providers delivering public services. And thirdly, it is the element of encouraging us all to be more active citizens, whether that's in terms of contributing our time or our money or our expertise or all of the above. We're a school of management here. Let's delve into that. What are the implications for managers and management? Well, if you accept irrespective of whether you think it's, it, it's good or bad that this concept that gets this label of big society is going to create all kinds of change for all three sectors, for the public sector, for business and for civil society organisations, charities, social enterprises, mutuals, voluntary organisations generally, then as managers in any of those sectors you've got to think about the implications for you and your organisation of some very, very big changes taking place around you. So if we pick private enterprise, if we pick business, what are the kind of implications coming out as far as you can see? Well, clearly for business one of the issues is going to be are we operating in any sectors where there are potentially chances for us to be taking on the delivery of, of, of some public services as commercial um, propositions. Uh, I think one of the, the areas that business um, is thinking about is um, without necessarily endorsing all the elements of the big society, um, have we got expertise that we can provide to some of the organisations that we have long term partnerships with, some social enterprises or some major voluntary organisations. For instance, uh, one of the consequences of all of the cuts currently taking place is that quite a number of voluntary organisations are having to consider mergers or acquisitions. Now that's a skill, a core skill in, in, in the private sector which most in the voluntary sector have never had to, to think about previously. So is there potential for a transfer of skills that might in fact be mutually beneficial um, for, for all concerned? Now if I'm sitting at the heart of government or I'm in a, one of these social enterprises, what are the implications for those? I think for social enterprises, um, one of the, the key implications is are there opportunities for us to be able to uh, take on um, the delivery of some of these public services that are apparently going to be uh, contracted out for uh, a range of possible providers to uh, deliver. Um, I think from the public sector side, there are some huge challenges in terms of cultural mind shift. And if you looked at one of the, the real kind of pinch points of this whole concept of big society, it is, in my mind, whether the politicians have understood if this is what they want to achieve, the scale and the intensity of the change management process and the culture change that they're going to have to try and bring about. And to understand that that's a very intense process which needs uh, proper management just like any other change management process. David you've stripped away some of the rhetoric here and really got down to some useful essentials thank you very much.